Hello and welcome to another episode of A Ghost in the Magazine. I'm Steph. And I'm Elle. And I'm Belle. And this week's movie is The Last Voyage of the Demeter. We rallied, we watched it right when it popped off, and now we're going to talk about it. Um, yep. This movie was so fucking long, you guys. <laughs> unreasonably long and i was in not a great situation in my theater because they didn't decide to just have it in the old theater they decided to have it in the auxiliary upstairs theater of the old theater there was no door there was visible mold on the walls it was not a place i wanted to be for five minutes nonetheless two hours there was a a warning sign across the front row of seats like, you couldn't sit there, and and they looked moist. I don't know what was going on. It was... Not moist. <laughs> moist. They looked moist. The whole room had an atmosphere to it that said black mold, and I did not want to be there. But, you so, know. I mean, it's like you got the, what is it, the 4K experience without paying for it. Because it's giving crusty, dusty ship. They were just setting, you know, the aesthetic mood for you. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, look at this guy. I can't believe I paid $11 and got such a deal. <laughs> <laughs> for a matinee! Oh, 11 for a matinee. 11 for a matinee in the crusty, dusty old theater. That's, That's unfortunate. I think I paid, like... 13 and some change but my theater was very nice and all the seats like it wasn't a flat theater they they went all the way up like this Mm -hmm. uh and none of them were sticky yeah i paid just over nine bucks pretty nice theater downtown vegas so there's like dozens Mm -hmm. and dozens showroom so you can go and see it whatever time you want it pretty much there's a showtime every hour so that was damn okay so i paid the most but i live in south florida <laughs> so, i would not think vegas but i don't know her so I, yeah i would have paid the same amount you paid steph if i would have gone during the evening oh and yeah it was friday night it was only showing in that one theater like that's the only place that they have it we we have two theaters in town and they're owned by the same people and whoever it was made the decision to put it there it's just i gotta get the hell out of here hell yeah but i think that's interesting we did talk about this earlier because i went to go see the meg when it came out and it was in like a really it was in the same movie theater but it was in a big a much bigger theater so when i got the tickets for this one i noticed that they had put it in a significantly smaller theater Mm -hmm. and I thought that that was interesting like they already assumed it wasn't going to do well yeah so they just kind of like shoved it off in the in the corner and I did notice the headlines that were like you know that it capsized it tanked you know they had a bunch of fun little like you know metaphors for it but they were planning it like I really think that the theater industry did not have either they knew the movie was shit or they were planning for it to be shit one or the other okay so like i didn't have a terrible time watching this movie i haven't seen any reviews or anything like that talking about how it tank i didn't have a bad time there were actually a lot of things about this movie that i actually like super enjoyed besides the fact that it was just too fucking long it's like i gotta give it a b for boring like oh you were bored the whole time most of the time except until people were getting eaten i think it was so long because yeah. there was exposition in every part where the action wasn't sure and the weird narrator would come in and like say something and i feel like that exposition really slowed it down especially in the beginning so yeah no i agree i definitely think that they really could have taken all that stuff out they gave us in the beginning it's a doomed ship we're expecting the doom give us the doom give it and that opening scene, very Wuthering Heights, very English moors and like the 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 rain and like, and then we have this awful CGI shipwreck immediately. It just, yeah, like, come on, come yeah. on. You wanted to, you wanted to keep the atmosphere there, guys. What the hell? I don't know. I also, I smoked before this movie. 
for me, me. Too. <laughs> so. I was stone cold sober as I always am but for me the CGI missed the mark every time every time I saw CGI I was like can we just do something practical here because this is not this is gonna be in like three years we're gonna look at this movie and call this Nintendo 64 graphics I'm just saying yeah it's not gonna be like a memorable remake which I was like excited for a fun take on Dracula yes. because it's been done to death like yes literally, even on this podcast we've covered so many versions of Dracula it's actually disgusting and I think we should ban it <laughs> but, there, but there's literally I'm pretty sure another version even being made with Bill Skarsgård right now like one that has yeah. a lot of Hollywood names in it I feel like I heard about it about the same time as I heard about this movie yeah so I feel like it could have been a lot more. He, I'm going to tell you what I what I liked because I feel like, uh, you know, what wasn't uh there, is is gonna there's gonna be more of that. I like like that a scene behind Mel. I love the little light eyes, um, mm. like peeking out of the darkness. Love that shit because it reminds me of Fright Night, right? Mm. And um, I like. There was a scene where he's creeping around this boat. There's only a crew of five. I feel like they should be able to find his ass, right? But he's just skulking around. And there's like scenes where he's giving Smeagol and he's just like this wretched thing and and he traps them into getting eaten. I like that he's so monster in this because there are so many renditions of this where it's more like man-like than monster and so they really focus heavy on the romantical oh my god is that a word it's a very uh little rascals they focus on the like he can romance you part as opposed to um he's a monster that's been terrorizing this village and I don't know look at that face Steph look at that <laughs> face I am kind of a babe just saying <laughs> are you I'm... like you... <laughs> I'm free smoking adds something to it like it added a kind of cat and mouse effect because after, you know, he had fed up to a certain point, obviously he was strong enough to just kill them all in minutes and eat them all. Yeah. Kill them all yeah. Names. Slowly mm -hmm. one by one, you know, lowering some of them in, getting some of them while they were trapped, that kind of thing. So I thought the, you know, kind of stalking around added to the fact that he obviously wanted to treat them like active prey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you're trapped out in this motherfucking boat with me. Like, let's play, let's go. And they can't go anywhere. They can't do anything about it. That's scary. And honestly, like, the only thing that they could do about it, right? Like, which, if the doctor had identified it when the, the farm animals went, which I got to talk about that in a minute, too. But if yeah. the doctor would have identified it then and, like, saw that this was something and said we need to go back because everyone was like is this something that could spread if he would have been like this is the plague we need to go back in all they're doing is dooming that port that they go back into so yeah. no matter what somebody's gonna die is it gonna be the people on and, and we see it doesn't matter of course but you know is it gonna be the people on this boat or is it gonna be whoever is in the port that we go into so the other thing is the way this is set up is giving more like an alien movie to me where like we are not a match. We are nowhere near. We don't know what the weaknesses are. This thing is overpowering um. us. We have no strategy to fight it. Mm -hmm. And they really don't until the woman start stops speaking cryptically and starts speaking a little bit of sense. And mm -hmm. even then in the horrendous deaths, which the first one was laughable the cgi on that like you really just needed to hire the guy from the velocipaster that said vfx oh, stop added it. because <laughs> that fire effect was awful the only time it was effective it was for me was the kid bad. the kid was effective for me i had a trouble with that but again the emotional manipulation of putting us in a boat with a fucking dog okay the dog 
is a black lab. It's not a terrier. It's not a rat dog. It's not there to do ship shit. It's just a cute dog. And you know that dog's going to get it. You got a whole fucking petting zoo down there. You got a little kid. Emotional manipulation out the fucking ass. That pissed me off immediately. Like, you're just, you're not respecting me as, as somebody watching a movie. You're not writing me a script. You're just trying to emotionally manipulate me, you asshole. That's, I just want to fight the writers. I'm sorry. Yeah. And it was like, come on now. You're not taking into account how many boat movies and ship movies we've all seen now. Like, we've seen the boat and ship movies. We know what kind of livestock, live livestock, you can actually have on a boat. Yeah. We've seen like, these are just for cute effects. And I'm totally with you. How is it that they were so confused about how to destroy this thing when they watched several people burst into flames? And I'm like, you guys didn't think at all to trap him in the sunlight or what? anything. We're like, well, fuck a hole in it and jump off. I mean, he has wings. Right. Just, but also, like, right in the beginning, okay, that old man with the one shitty eye was like, I'm not getting on this fucking boat because you got a box with a dragon on it. That dragon, like, you guys are going to die. So mm -hmm. the instant strange things start being afoot at the Circle K, why don't you go for the box with the fucking dragon on it? Right. Besides the fact that these are sailors. Sailors are the most superstitious motherfuckers ever. Yeah. And we see woman. that a little bit with the woman. Like woman. as soon as bad luck, woman. Right. The, that's and that's a sailing superstition. <laughs> but you're telling me that these superstitious men would have had that interaction with that weird eye dude and just been like, No, I'm getting on. We're all good. Like, no way. No fucking way. These guys didn't act like sailors either. It was like the hobbits at the table having a fucking conversation before taking off from the Shire. It wasn't like there was a little bit of locker room talk, but that was it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I feel like the woman was really only, you know, superstitious because she was Romanian. You know, she was a brown white person. So she was a brown of white person. <laughs> There. I'm sorry. I'm never gonna like any movie that only has one woman and one black person. So, <laughs> but at least they left them to the end. You know what I mean? That's, that's true. true. Both they of did. them made it. Well, she didn't make it all the way, but don't do that. And she also was just so typical, like movie woman. She was there to provide the emotional comfort. You know, say the prayers at the funeral. The reason when everybody's like, let's just shoot everything. You know, and just. It didn't okay. make a lot of sense. But also, like, she had the Kate Beckinsale effect in Van Helsing. She's just, all of a sudden, she's awake, she's got blood transfusions, but I'm like, this man's gonna run out of motherfucking blood. They're eating cabbage, and he's sharing his cabbage with her yeah. and his blood. How? And what about blood type? Can we, yes! That, I was like, can we talk about the blood She wakes up, and she's just kicking ass. Right. She's just kicking so much ass. Okay, blood transfusions became a thing in like the 1890s, like That's end of it. the 1800s, right? This is like Dracula said in like 1897 or 1899, somewhere around there, right? So it's like, yes, this is cutting edge technology that he would know that. Most of these motherfuckers at this time period were still using leeches. They were not using blood transfusions. They didn't know that. And you and putting blood from like a just like one arm to the other like you're telling me they had they get blood type rh factor all this shit like no he put the razzle dazzle on it i just miss me with the steampunk blood transplant <laughs> yes that's what I it just, was. i'm not a heartless person but like no she yes. she got she's done for she gotta go like dump her overboard we like we we got shit going on I'm sorry, but like I'm not giving her my I'm not giving her my blood. Well, also I think that the fact that they backed off like the the other sailors as superstitious men backed off as easy and quickly as they did, especially when Mr. Chekhov got real fucking racist real fast as soon as all that dropped, you know. You're telling me that they backed off so fast and I guess that was gonna <laughs> I don't care. I'm a white person. I can be like that against other whites. It got really racist really fast. In the beginning, yeah. I same thing. I was like, 
oh yes, finally we're gonna go fiction. And since we're doing fiction, black people can be the My only people in the room and we're just gonna stick with that. And I was really hoping for that. But no, that one guy had to say, don't get your hopes up. You know, <laughs> he's still a black guy to us. <laughs> you know, yeah. just. Oh, mm. black guy who could save your life. Whatever. What else? <laughs> I just feel like we understand that fiction is fiction and mm -hmm. that there is no historical fiction that involves a flying blood sucking bat. You know, so if we're accepting that we're creating a world can't we create a world where he was just the educated guy on the boat, you know? And he just and, happened to be black. Right. Happens to be the only black one. Happens so, to be the only maybe, black one. Maybe that'll be his thing. Maybe he'll be the nerd. You know, I was okay with that. <laughs> yes. We gotta have a nerd. Every okay. movie has to have a nerd. Every movie has to have a nerd. May we please? I, I know ch child death is super not cool. Okay, but this scene, okay, this whole scene, I, I forget the names, but the guy, the guy who basically got possessed, I think he was the first guy to like bust into flames, the tall guy, mm -hmm. um, who they had strapped down. I did think his oh, like Jared. being possessed by Dracula thing was super fucking cool. Mm -hmm. It was like the coolest thing in the movie. Mm -hmm. I just was really dazzled by that. But then he's like a monster, you know, they call him like a demon, but like that's, it's almost giving Catholic possession with the little boy and, and the whole scene. Like it was just a lot, you know what I mean? It, yeah. it was pretty cool, but it was also well, um, a whole lot. I think that, like I was telling Mel before, instead of turning into another vampire, it, he was he was given evil dead. He yes. wasn't yes. giving like vampire. And that was interesting. Like him slamming his head into the door and like his yeah. face bleeding. That uh -huh. was Gnarly. that was a terrifying new take on it. I if the rest of the movie was like that. I, I thought know. that's where it was going. I literally mm -hmm. thought that's where it was going. And I was like excited mm -hmm. at that point. But like, mm -hmm. and the scene where he busts into flames, I thought was really cool. <laughs> I did. Session was one of the more innovative parts of this movie in terms of reinterpreting the Jack Dracula story. You know, yeah. they didn't change, they didn't grow fangs. They wanted violence, but it didn't seem like they were looking to feed in the same kind of way. So, mm -hmm. you no, know, like they were almost like just driven into madness. And maybe that makes me think like maybe some bodies can't turn into vampires, or like maybe he just doesn't want them to, and he can control your transition or your well, transformation. the other thing is like with and rice vampires you have to have an exchange of blood oh, so yeah. maybe yeah. it's something like that but like what happens if you you get bit but you don't die but you you know or something or i don't know you get that guy for, sorry i keep talking about fright night <laughs> you get the the daytime slave man from fright night mm. maybe yeah. you know I think that's almost like a post-COVID twist because we've got in our mind this idea of what infection looks like, mm -hmm. you know? I think we're kind of moving away from an infection that is super visible in terms of media. You know, infection, like over the last hundred years has looked transformative. You know, you get bitten, you're gonna change. You're gonna become a spider or a, you know, ninja mutant turtle or mutant ninja turtle, there we go. You know, <laughs> like you're gonna change into something. And I think after COVID where people were walking around, you know, laying around looking normal and dying the next day that it changed the cultural perception of infection. And that's terrifying. Like Very that's scary. One of the scarier parts of it, for me, at least. I, I like that, that they were just getting, like, infected, possessed, you know, not necessarily mm -hmm. changing. Yeah, and then you don't know, like, what's going to happen next. So when it got the little boy, you're like, is he going to die? Is he going to get possessed? Is he going to turn into a little vampire baby? 
Mm -hmm. um and that scene was really devastating when they were um because you don't realize right away that the little boy died that he passed away and the next thing you know they're like we covered him in a tarp and the dad's like no um he's still alive and you're like please don't open it like don't open it yeah it's the dead victorian child look um because he is a dead victorian child oh um (laughs) And then he bursts into flames after he comes back, which is that one did get me a little bit. But again, I knew I knew when I we started that movie and that kid was there that yeah. I was going to end up hurt over that child because because it's a doomed ship and and we don't know if anyone is going to make it. We have to assume that everybody died. Mm-hmm. Except I mean, for the black man. <laughs> across the ocean like when could you ever put kids on a ship and expect them to live like right no like no i I thought it was surprising because you know um i think about pirates of the caribbean which is probably not the best reference for ship stuff but like crew of five you're i already said y'all are not gonna make it y'all aren't gonna make it that's Mm -hmm. not enough people that's a big old ship it's not (laughs) no sorry for the lack of faith but and then you got this guy on it no and the the crew dwindled really fast we i mean we had the chef who was a hysterical religious extremist yeah um, i should have thrown him overboard as well <laughs> like get him out of here but he tried to throw him well he didn't try to throw himself overboard he believed that god would help him if he went out in the life raft but this bitch this where bitch was he gonna fly. go what what do you right. gonna and he can conjure fucking fog that's thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not getting anywhere. No. That's why, like, go ahead. Like, praying really loud. Oh, God. Ed with the lantern on. <laughs> There's flashes in the horse. I mean, Making so much goddamn yeah. noise. <laughs> right. right. He was not rolling for stealth, that's for sure. And then their their scheme of like trapping dracula in the boat and sinking the boat it's like at, <laughs> and doing it at night like i mean sinking the boat during the day maybe like trapping him down yes. there sinking the boat during the day getting away why the fuck would you wait for night you've just seen all these people explode like what the fuck is wrong with you they waited like, for everything let's wait till night i mean they waited for night for everything um, it's so silly when they have this romanian bitch on board who's literally like my people have been uh hunted by this thing for centuries so why are you why are you not helping why are you just being hot with a shotgun do better we do need somebody hot with a shotgun in the movie that's Obviously. also the nerd the hot with the shotgun the religious extremist the hobbit we've got it all and we prefer the hot with a shotgun not to be a man true I mean, unless it's Ash, then it's okay. Then it can be Ash. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I still don't understand their incompetence for how to get rid of it. At the end, I really thought that when the mast fell on his chest, that it would puncture his chest. And I'm like, there's our wooden stake, you know, but no. Yes, me too. No. Past, and that well, we already know though we already know that dracula doesn't die here we already know that <laughs> yeah. just like the doomed ship you know what i mean also <laughs> the thing that kept taking me out wasn't the bad cgi it was this bitch screeching all the time <laughs> like he spent so much time screeching into people's faces i'm like we get it you're loud echolocation we get it shut the fuck up just like <laughs> we need some peace here can you just please be quieter, okay? For like I'm two autistic. seconds. For like two That's seconds. Like, geez, I'm right here. I'm right here. God. Right. Like, you, and you don't have to spit. You don't got to scream. <laughs> you know what's funny, though? You guys went for like, you know, the, the poetic justice of getting, you know, staked with a thing. I was like, I hope that hit him in the nuts. I hope. That Does he was have my nuts? Class. Where hit? I don't know. I just like that was my note is please tell me that mass hit him in the balls. I mean tiny exposed bat nuts. (laughs) Yeah, they're probably like the size of my pinky nail, honestly. (laughs) If we're being honest, and I have small hands. Um okay, so like I know that I said I love how in this movie that he was like mostly monster, 
but the way that she was talking about him she was like you know this is a beast he can masquerade as a man Mm -hmm. so i would have loved at the end when he was in that hat for him to look like a man yeah and not this guy in a hat that's yeah. weird. It, and it felt like they're setting it up for a sequel, aren't they? Yeah, it does. But it was giving Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, like, very weird and please don't do a sequel. You know what I actually thought of? I have what? some th- on this bookshelf somewhere is there's, like, the Holmes Dracula file, which is, like, a Sherlock oh, yeah. Holmes Dracula one. I was yes. Like, That's that what it felt perfect. like at the end. Yes. Although, I don't know, for me, it would have been story over. I would have seen him in the bar and I'd be like, well, all right, I'm getting out of this town. Good luck. Adios, lunch. Motherfucker. He's like, I'm going to like, catch him. He's stalking you. <laughs> this main right. character, he was like so serious. Everything was so, he's taking the, everything so seriously. And like, he was so intense and like, it was almost too much. I loved him otherwise, but like. I like uh, yeah. people intensity intensities like there's some serious stuff going on how do you expect him to be a goofy guy when this guy's out there i don't know we had the justin hawkins hobbit guy that was just like still making jokes about banging chicks till the end. and look what happened to him l <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna need byron to come take you back his hero for the main character on this one it's just nobody could say anything they're like oh the, the sea is mad he's like no no the sea doesn't get mad it's the weather and i'm like okay buddy like are you gonna pick your battle like at any moment so i'm not gonna argue with a bunch of seafaring like people who can't read you know about whether the sea is mad or there's weather so seafaring dinguses front of me (laughs) just could not let it go you know what also i didn't understand this is such a like a non-fucking point you guys are probably gonna be mad at me um the captain right he was saying this was gonna be his last voyage he promised his daughter that he would be done so when they're telling him but you don't gotta die with the ship you don't have to go down with the ship and he's like where else would i go go see your daughter bro that too he said he had like a cottage cabin or something yeah live Uh, the rest of your life so i interpreted that as the kid belonged to the daughter and the daughter had passed and he promised her tell me that i want it to be canon that he had somewhere to go (laughs) no Um, i don't think he did i really think that his plan was to raise her son because his daughter had passed and that's how i took it huh well now i'm sad i know it's sad the whole fucking thing is sad like the guy coming back our main character our hero he came back to england because he had been summoned out to romania to be a doctor because he couldn't find a job in england but apparently well his name got out there the fact that he was black did it and so when he showed up and was black they sent him back and so he didn't really he was just trying to figure out like what the hell was wrong with the world where he could do everything right and still get fucked over which same but like what an existential episode the first thing he did too with those sailors is sit down at that table and present an existential argument and then we have uh old man davos over there acting (laughs) like they're in the lighthouse you know they're having this like conversation (laughs) back and forth dude literally i guess i guess that's what you can expect from sea dudes so the moral of the story is don't sea date dudes. sea dudes okay or batman <laughs> do what i can yeah. oh, no, no, no. <laughs> i mean i don't know I, I i'm sticking with the fact that the babe in this movie is that guy right there hard to resist <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's following up this man. No. If I had to choose, I would choose psoriasis. <laughs> Respectfully. I don't know. He's exciting. Um, you know. And, you know, if we're really bored, we could get into a screech off. Dude. I'm competitive. You could... He could wrap wings. He did that to that one chick. I was like, yeah. is he eating her? Is, what's he doing? You know, like. Yeah. I love to be smothered. I love a needy man. 
a nice leathery wing. You could have a staring contest with the glow eyes, you know? So yeah. You uh, first. Yeah, I don't know. What if it melts my glasses? These shits are expensive. <laughs> Just like lots of like practical dating advice for dating Dracula, you know? Like all these fun activities you could do. You Just don't, don't go in the sun. You don't date him. You <laughs> either are his wife or his feeding bag. You don't date Dracula. <laughs> Well, feeding back oh. is kind of a date. I mean, you're going to dinner with him. Hot. It's it's giving serial monogamist. I mean, either you're married to him or his feeding bag. That's like the she, same. She was These the are your only options, body, babe. it seemed like. <laughs> What'd you guys think of the overall aesthetic, like of the ship and the costumes and the props? costumes were basic. Like it was basic. It was basic. I'm on a boat. We never saw any food, even when they were sitting and like eating mm -hmm. places. Like, do you remember seeing any food? I kind of hated that. Like, I want to see an aesthetic feast if we have to go historical fiction. They didn't even really have like ale mugs or anything. No. Like, they were talking, they had like what some chess pieces. I there mean, there was it no just, color, it no was color. all dark. There was no color to contrast except for fire. Well, I adhere so much to a dark aesthetic, you know, and an aesthetic without, you know, kind of some, I guess, flair. If you're going to slack on some things, like all of the lanterns had obvious light bulbs and they were carrying around like flashlights, you know, I'm like, okay, if you're going to do one, do the other, like these would have to be candles. I mean, it's just not canon. That's not canon. Yeah, it's like, why stick to the historical period of so many things? It's like, oh, well, we have to have racism because historically racism, but then you got light bulbs in the lanterns. I mean, yeah. pick one. I don't know. And then you have miraculous shit where like everyone has the same blood type and we know about uh, blood transfusions, even though it was just invented like last year. Bro. Yeah, it's, it's a hot mess. Uh, I would love to know what the budget was and where do you think they spent most of it on the CGI, right? Yeah, the CGI was dog shit, though. I'm sorry. Like, this, whoever did the CGI for the Mayfair Witches show did the CGI. I'm just saying. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. The effects are better than Evil Bong, though. That's a it's low that's fucking that's bar, Stephanie. So. I, damn, that's. Ooh, that's our standard okay if the effects needing to be better than evil bong or like where we're going i think most movies pass like let's give her a pass there's no booby wall but i'd give it two chuds oh yeah the cgi was not great even if you like made a little mini model ship and wrecked it i think it would probably yes. look Better. Come on, come on, you guys. That's not real. I don't believe you. <laughs> they do that. They make many models and then yeah. Wreck oh yeah. Oh no, I know that's real, but it's not real that that would be better. I don't, I don't know. know, dude. That sh on, uh, that shipwreck that. in that that scene in the beginning, man, that threw me out immediately. That. I don't even count that scene at the beginning. I like wasn't even ready yet. I I was just like pounding skittles. I wasn't even ready yet, so <laughs> it just it didn't count for me. The but budget the was forty five million. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. What was the budget for Evil Bong? Twelve dollars. Let me look. <laughs> okay, so forty five million dollars was spent on CGI. Yes, versus three hundred dollars to make Bad Ben, which was a better movie in my opinion. <laughs> there was food in Bad Ben. There was Cheetos, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were Cheetos. There was uh, M and M's on the side table. You know, there was an old man farting into a recliner. <laughs> Luxurious. <laughs> you know that is that is my like choice of entertainment is an old man farting into a recliner. You know. Yeah, I'm not gonna watch this movie again. Um, <laughs> Probably not. I'm no. not. I don't regret watching it. I regret paying for it. Yes, and I pre-ordered it on Amazon just because I was like, you know, I might want this in my collection. Something just to think about. Went straight back and canceled that <laughs> pre-order after seeing it because as you should. I, 
that again. And it's not even like it was that bad. It wasn't. It, just, it wasn't. It, it didn't add anything to, you know, no. the long, long list of Dracula movies. So. I'm literally gently placing it in the pile of all the Dracula movies. It's yeah. the only one that has made it out of that pile. It's always going to be Gary Oldman's Dracula for me. It's It's always... I... I have cross oceans of time for you like that. <clears throat> I don't even think Gary Oldman is hot, but no, I would have I would have followed him wherever he asked me to go. So. Literally, that makes he's only like Dracula hot. Like he's not hot in any other context, but like he blows like Dracula out, out of the water, and like you won't catch him dead with psoriasis when he's holding that cane and he's got that no he's spiffier than a motherfucker he turns Spiff- into some kind of monster in that movie and yeah. they do that really well and yes. and that's a that's ugly cgi too but the fact that they don't lean on it for the whole fucking thing and the whole scare right. and the whole they've got wind is- there's leaves blowing lucy's moaning and thrashing <laughs> everywhere oh they could yeah. have done a lot with this and they did it and i think that the the expectations are what really kills it for people for me at least like the fact that i went into this like this is going to be my next favorite movie and then came out Ooh. of it irritated i think <laughs> i didn't go in like that no <laughs> I, you know i expected to like it yeah. i did it like it i did it my favorite you know but it's been a while since i've seen a, a vampire movie you know at least what a couple of years since they put out a decent one so I we expect- saw the invitation i didn't see that one but i listened to Nell your and guys's episode and <laughs> i don't want to see it now <laughs> i also made a tiktok about that man because <laughs> yeah that man I think my overall comment about this movie is that it's an unsuccessful interpretation of the literary aspect of Dracula that people like. One of the strongest parts about reading Brahms, I guess, is tone. You know, the difference between creepy, which Dracula is very creepy, is the constant setting of tone. Whereas scary is all incidental. It's all about what happens, who screams, who gets bitten. This really tried to be scary when the story of Dracula is and you have to set a tone to do that. You need more. You need certain colors and sounds, better music. First of all, the music was mostly sounds and not music, not necessarily a score in a lot of parts. So it just failed tonally, you know? And I think that was a problem. Another thing was, yeah, Dracula wasn't necessarily until the very end depicted as a charming, handsome person in clothes, which was the point of Dracula. It was, a, you know, a commentary on classism and elitism and things like that. You know, that's why there was a handsome man in rich, fine, luxurious clothes eating people in the dark, you know? So yeah. I think it yes. too, really important aspects of making Dracula work, especially for American people. Well, that's the that sure. was the other thing that I thought was this isn't what a count would do. Come on. No. This isn't this isn't very aristocratic, you know? Well, okay. <laughs> I, I will say like the stuff on the boat though, that could be a count in a very like starved manner. Cause she did say at one point like there's no one left to eat in my country. That's why he's leaving. If he's like starving on this boat because he was also rationing them, I can yeah. see him being disgusting. But he's got to clean it up later once he makes land and there's people galore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he obviously plumped back up in yes. his time because he went from you know crawling around and the dirt and eating animals or whatever to pretty powerful at the end, you know, threw the ship's mass off of him. So I think he definitely had enough at the end to then go back into his facade, I guess. But And have skin, you know, have a little skin. Just a little and moist rider, not so much moist nets. Right, and, and like tuck the wings away, you know, like suck them shits back into your, your back or wherever they go, you know, be man like i don't know it wasn't doing it for me so my question for you guys is shit if they have like a dr sailor vampire hunter 
next year you know they come out with an with a sequel or are you watching it no <laughs> no i'll I let y'all watch it i'll let someone else sacrifice themselves before i decide i would watch that i don't think there's gonna be a sequel i don't mm-hmm. think they can afford a sequel if you're gonna make a sequel of anything anybody make constantine 2 thank you yeah i knew that was coming <laughs> give keanu his job back give it yeah i'm watching it just because that would probably be one of the first black vampire hunters so you know yeah see when you say it like that i'm obligated (laughs) but he better not be just a nerd the whole time i'm gonna need him to get a bit of like badass in his system yeah open your shirt a little you know (laughs) he was no? cute he could have stood yeah. to be a little bit sexier i'm just saying like yeah, I'm yeah. more skin come on you know letting letting that guy take you know that that guy <laughs> there you know he was okay that that was one thing that did kind of fuck me up a little bit is like when the little boy is like hiding in the room we see dracula's naked ass there i'm yeah. like put it away sir Put some pants on, you <laughs> sick freak. At least they didn't show balls. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> His little bat balls. Tiny like, bat. What are those? Oh! <laughs> they got that little tiny bat fuzz on them. I don't understand why they didn't save the kid. The hole in the door was huge. They could have opened it a thousand times. He's man. like, oh, I can't reach. Get in there. Get in there. <laughs> Somebody give him a boost. You know what I mean? Get in there. It's crazy. Why they open the door. It's gonna. I mean, you see the thing. You might as well take your chances. There's nothing on this fucking ship that's literally made of wood to to uh, use as a step stool. Are you kidding me? Nothing. Besides, just like the fact that the guy made the hole from like bashing his head into it. Like you could just you know try Heal running it. and you know doing that. And they yeah. they got through at the end. Our dude who, you know, he died ripped to that guy, like the first mate yeah. who was going to be the next captain. He was, he was able to be captain. Right. But he was able to, like, use a, a fucking, like, hatchet and get through the hole of the fucking ship. If you can get through the hole of a ship with a few hatchet wax, like, why couldn't you get through a fucking door? Thank you. Logic. <laughs> no, it doesn't make any sense. None of it. That was the problem with this movie so many places is like it just didn't make sense. Right. And then it was it was hot badass lady who was like, get the fuck out of my way and shotgun the door. Yeah. Hot shotgun. Hot shotgun. Did that's, the narr- that's the next song. She shot through the door. Like that narration <laughs> <was> so terrible. <laughs> just why was it there? It was so random. It would just pop up random like, oh, who's that? You know, like, and then I laid him on the table. It's just like, what's going on? Who's this just, narrator? Just, you just be quiet. We've got eyeballs. You just yeah, our own devices. Not that complicated the scenario happening right no. now. Everybody's screaming. They should have called this movie looking for guys on a boat because a lot of the time it was just, hey hey like just screaming for other guys are you okay like you know dark on a boat screaming for a guy you know the whole movie so i did like, see a tweet that was criticizing the movie because they thought that the name was too much like it, nobody knew that it had anything to do with dracula and they needed to like i thought the name was cool so i'm okay. a nerd i guess but i don't know it was like voyage of the dawn treader it's good mm-hmm. you, if it's a boat it needs a long name. It's about a boat. Mm-hmm. I think that the movie did its own job of fucking itself up, but that's just my opinion. This wasn't terrible. It's just, you know, like, that's it, was... it for me. That's it for me and The Last Voyage of the Demeter. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. That's all I got. And yeah. Bring- you want to see it you know it does kind of give you the munchies a little bit or i just had the munchies i don't know <laughs> i i mean yeah i ate a lot of skittles a little column a, a little column b yeah i also had twinkies in my bag so you know definitely have snacks and maybe that's why you were so mad oh because i don't think you brought snacks i didn't because and if i did i wouldn't have ate them because the theater was disgusting and did not 
make me want to eat anything so. like the bullet mm-hmm. checks out yeah two chuds what do you think mel how many chuds I, i've got to give it yeah probably two just because <laughs> maybe one and a half you know like it just it Here. didn't move. it didn't move me i wanted to I, like it i did it i did i tried yeah i was like oh he's gonna eat someone soon i'm gonna get into this <laughs> But even the even the eating wasn't, you know, the traditional like vampire, almost like sexual, yeah. you know, kind of throats open, wasting a lot of blood. Right? What a wasteful bitch! And then licking the fucking deck boards, really. That was hysterical <laughs> and like really creepy. <laughs> hysterical. I'm like, there's m- you just sucked all those fucking uh, sheep's and shit. You're fine. <laughs> you don't have to lick the floor. Blood much? Okay, two chuds. So anyways, you can find this podcast on the interwebs at ghostinthemagazine.site uh, on Twitter at GITM Podcast. You can find me on Twitter at Witch X Pudding. And you can find me at Nocturnical. And you can find me at Hedda underscore Mel. Okay, bye!